News 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nicole Camarda in for Jake Garcia. This morning, hundreds of people took to the streets in downtown Boise to watch and take part in the 2022 Boise Pride Parade. This year, Boise Pride celebrated its 33rd year, hosting Idaho's largest Pride event of the year. Today is the third and final day of the Boise Pride Festival, and festivities kicked off early this morning with the Fred Meyer Pride Parade, which took place in the streets of downtown Boise. Community members came together all weekend to support the LGBTQ community and more at Boise Pride. Our photojournalist Lindsay Williams shows us how Idahoans celebrated Pride all weekend long. You won't break mine. No. You won't break mine. No. You won't break mine. No. That's right, Boise Pride. So today we are celebrating Boise Pride 2022 here at Cecil B. Andrews Park. Pride is important because it shows love and respect for everybody. It shows individuals that they are welcome, that we are here, they're not alone. It embraces everybody. We show them love. You're special. Pride is very, very vital. It gives everybody a chance to get together and get to know each other. A lot of us don't necessarily go out. Um, some of us have real professional jobs, so this is a chance to get with everyone, kind of like a family reunion, but also for a cause, you know, just to show that we're normal people. We like to have a good time, get some support from our allies and our friends. So it's just a big celebration, basically. It's Saturday here at Pride. We're actually in the middle of a two and a half hour walk of all the incredible local drag performers, which is why I'm here today, to support the local, incredible talent that we have here in Boise. Drag is the ability for me to be creative and show the world what creativity I have bottled up inside on a stage. Riley has worked their tail off to create a show that unfortunately did not go as hit. I need you guys to be loud and proud for these kids. Let them know how amazing they are and that we stand with them. We will not let the hate get to us. These kids are incredible performers and they deserve to be celebrated. It's important because kids need creativity. They need to know that their ideas and their dreams and their art, they're normal. Those are good things. Those are things that should be nourished and shown to everybody. Like, never hide your art, never hide your gift. It's a gift. You just want to make sure at least someone's supportive of you. Even if it's not your parents, because it took a while for my parents to be accepted. And then I came here and I found out like, wow, I have all these people that I can count on if I ever need anything. I only recently came out as lesbian. I've always known I was bisexual. But it was actually the incredible queer community here in Boise that helped me and be able to be exactly who I am. It's your brothers, your sisters, your coworkers, your teachers. You know, we're just people. We want to live, we want to enjoy our lives like anyone else. And, you know, and this is our chance to do that and bring our kids to these events. Stay strong. Everybody needs to just lead with love, and if you lead with love, you can conquer anything. This is Idaho News 6. Oasis Music Festival is a local festival hosted at Captain Harry's Oasis in between Boise and Mountain Home. Our photojournalist Lindsay Williams was at the festival and shows us a sample of the sights and sounds of local artists. Yeah, welcome to the Oasis. We got a few friends in low places. to bring the community together with music, art, and intention, yeah. and create a space where people can be free to be whoever they want. We're doing some really major things in the community. We're putting on a lot of local talent, local vendors, local merchants. And on top of that, you've got art and music and workshops. It's beautiful. So I'm a fine art photographer. Almost everybody in this community is an artist of some sort. Uh, the flow arts, the fire spinning is very prevalent in this community. We've got painters, photographers, sculptors, any type of art you can think of, you're gonna find here. And that's really our biggest goal, is just to make sure that people are feeling loved and have a place where they can express themselves in their art without having any judgment on it. To be able to come dressed up as something else when it's not Halloween, uh, to just shake off that nine to five, shake off the, the family, shake off all the troubles of the world, and just go freak out for a few days. 
beautiful. I think people have been holed up for too long. They need to feel their freedom, freedom of speech and expression. And music is always good for the soul of the savage beast, baby. It'll make you a happier person, and that's what it's all about. There's two stages, yeah. uh, hip hop and other genres of local art as well. So we don't have the best, the biggest and the best sound and the best lights and the best lasers, but we got the best people. And that's and what that's matters. that's what keeps people coming back. Our goal with Oasis is to show not only Idaho, but the world that yeah. Idaho is not just potatoes. We are not just farmland. We are a loving, caring culture of melting potted people. We're trying to make sure that this city, this state, understands that the community is most important. And if we take care of each other, there's no stopping us. It ain't bad out here in the desert. Just gotta add a little water. A historic figure coming back into view today at the Idaho Military History Museum. Donut Dollies, who supported troops in World War II and beyond, assisting at a blood drive today. The event designed to save lives while bringing a little nostalgia back to some of the troops. Photojournalist Lindsay Williams takes us there. At the Idaho Military Museum, along with the Boise Bells, we sponsored the Red Cross Blood Drive. One of the things we wanted to do was get people into the museum on Veterans Day, and we also wanted to give the veterans an opportunity to give back to the community. Today we are taking this opportunity to honor Donut Dollies, which are women who joined up with the American Red Cross to go overseas and provide morale for men. They were out there giving donuts to people, giving coffee, giving company. Sometimes they would even mend their clothing and going into combat zones quite often to reach these men who were in the thick of it and just so, so beaten upon and they needed a little helping hand, a little smile, a little donuts. It may seem trivial like a donut, it's worth its weight in gold in the combat zone. It's the little things, and having been deployed nine times, I can tell you that little things go a long way. Always remember my donut girl. She brought them donuts and coffee. Just like an angel, she was their best pal. We wanted the donut dollies to show what women, particularly civilian women, did during times of war from about World War I all the way up to Vietnam. So this is a way of giving back to the community in the form of blood. Because there's a great need for blood donations and helping people, including our veterans as well, who might need some blood. Blood drives are incredibly important. The need for blood never ever goes away. There are still conflicts overseas. People, hospitals still need blood. So this is an ongoing thing that I don't think we should be negligent about and this is one cool opportunity to make a blood drive all the more appealing to everyone. So not only are we showing you the tools of war around here, but we're also showing you the human side of it and then we're showing you also how it's, it's everybody, it's the men and women. I mean, when you think of war and you think of women with war, you think Rosie the Riveter, well, they did a lot more. And when you think of war, you think of a soldier, everybody's a soldier. But here at the museum, we have Navy, Air Force, Army, Marines. We show you that not everybody's a soldier, but we're all brothers in arms. So don't forget the Foundation Army. Remember my donut girl.